Okay, welcome back to part two, guys. Thanks for joining me. And um, just a couple things to point out that I made mistakes in the the last episode. So uh, the etched part that's on the top of the fin, just under where the rudder goes, that's actually, I've said it's a parachute cutting (laughs) blade. It's actually spin recovery parachute guard, which is what I didn't realise. The aircraft has a parachute in it. And as it deployed uh, if it was in a spin that would stop the parachute getting caught it it, it would deflect it apparently and also the um, control stick in the cockpit where it's got a trigger and I said that was a trigger it's actually the brake lever so that's uh, two little edits Um, you know I'm not uh, don't say I don't make mistakes they do creep in occasionally so back to resuming with part two So straight in, once the airframe's been checked and um, happy with the seams, it's time to start thinking about adding the rivets back in, On um, certainly on places where it's sanded back. So on the leading edge of the wing, uh, just using the Rosie Riveter tool here at the 0.65 scale there, which is 148 for 172, but but the scale doesn't really matter. The size either fits or it doesn't. So I'm just retracing uh, the lines here around the leading edge. Uh, and that's what disappears so just basically match them up with the ones below really just roll round it does want to shoot off sometimes you've got to be a little bit careful and same again here just on the top of the spine uh, i've just lost a few i could actually see the line there so it was easy enough to retrace uh, it was just a bit faint where i'd sanded for it so um it's a simple thing to do and you only really need to do this obviously if it's got the recessed rivets and a little touch up there on the on the top of the cowling as well uh, this variant has some guards, uh, some armour plating added to the fuel tank. Now this is a little bit of a pain um, in photo etch. It's a bit tricky to get on, but you just got to take your time. As you can see, I've sanded back there uh, the horizontal plate. And I just did that. To, <laughs> I had to super glue it down and then just to sand it back to make sure it was smooth. The curved one, I just bent that around something quite wide and then placed it around the fuel tank and uh, it was it's okay it goes on all right uh, next up so this is a problem i'd be interested to see what your views are on if any of um you've made this i simply cannot get that to fit the other part of this this is the fixed canopy at the rear and to me it seems like what you've got here is the same bit cut four times so it, although it doesn't look like that the way it places on, I've tried every single bit and it won't fit this side because it's always, it's, it's like it's mirrored. Uh, you'll see as I start to do it. It does it, it looks obvious. It looks like you just peel off the other side. But the bit I've put on here was for the other side, but I have to turn it. So here that you've got this kind of corner cut off, that corner is cut off on the other side. So I turn it around so the cut corner is going into there, but then it's too wide. Because it needs to be on, the, it needs to be turned on its axis to fit in between the two bars. So I was doing this forever, and I still didn't get any of them to fit. I had to cut it in the end, but I couldn't work it out. I was losing my mind a bit, to be honest. It was, um, I was thinking, well, they're all cut differently, so one should fit. And here you can see where it's too wide. It's going over those bars. And it's obviously meant to be inside the um, the framing bars on the, on the outside. And one of them has a notch cut in it. So here, I try the next bit. And they're all cut the same. And you'll see the same issue. That it will fit. But then it's too wide. As you can see, it's hanging out the back. It doesn't, doesn't fit at the back there. And that was my issue. <laughs> so this drove me insane, really. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do about it. So I just stuck them on and then cut the bit that was overlapping. Uh, so if you manage to get them to fit perfectly, you're a, you're a better man than me. Also, um, this doesn't fit snugly around here. And what is more kind of unforgivable is if Edward can't get this right, who can? I mean, they must have the dimensions. Here you'll see that this bit overlaps. I'm being a bit picky here, but, you know, I think it should be. You can see the framing and that the yellow tape is over it. Whereas here, it's inside the framing, where, as it should be. But then it's a bit too tight around the, um, the, the front windscreen. So uh, I just cut the extra bit off 
tracing down there the rest of it fitted okay so once that's off you can see i just had to take off about half a mil uh, now it's into painting so everything masked up uh on the underside and i've sprayed that uh, with 369 over the top and uh, that's from the mr color range i apologize i seem to have lost a tiny bit of footage that shows the underside painting but all it is is painted silver mr color eight uh, so there's nothing special there we haven't lost anything so it's a uh, white tack worms here for the camouflage this is to give a nice uh, tight but feathered edge on the camouflage and i've shown this before on the channel but you just peel the pick these off into the right size and trace the uh, camouflage scheme over the wing like this and then once that's done you fill that in uh, the important thing here is what i always find an issue is i sometimes fill in the wrong side so i mask off the green area um instead of masking the brown because what you're doing here is masking the brown and sometimes you get a bit confused uh, so you need to check that and once that's done i just sprayed the green straight on N no messing about just hosed it on and everything was fine peeled it off and there you can see the camouflage so now we're into the decals and these are the new edward decals as it's sort of been labeled um the idea is that you can peel off the carrier film. Uh, so for this stage, they act like any other decal. And you do need to use a setting solution to make sure that they bed down nicely. Um, and once it's off the carrier film, you just spread it on in a normal way. But what you'll find is they don't really behave that well. They're a little bit um, stubborn, I found. No matter what was used, they wouldn't go down very well. They wouldn't sort of bed in. Um, and I have used every single setting solution possible that I have, including solver set left overnight um, and some uh, thinners. And it didn't really do a lot, to be honest, unless you pressed it down um, and then it would tend to rise up again. So it is, it's a funny thing. Um, I feel like it's a step backwards. The, the decals that they were doing in their weekend edition kits and that they were printing in-house recently were the thinnest carrier film I've ever used and um, the best decals. With a touch of setting solution, they'd go into any of the recessed um, details. This seems to me, personally, this is my opinion, to be a complete gimmick and is not really propelling the idea of decals forward. Um, that's just my views. Other people may have different views. Um, here I am pressing over the raised rivets and you'll see how they come through. Um, and it's pretty good. It's okay. It's quite effective how it, how it pushes through there. And I use more and more setting solution all over this um, time and time again and then press them down and leave it for a bit and put more on and press it down and on and on and on and on. Um, and none of it really made any difference, to be honest. Um, now I have used a lot of decals in the past. I do sort of know my way around. There you can see underneath, that's the Mr. Color 8 straight out the bottle i haven't filmed any of the painting because it was just simple it was literally pour it into the bottle thin it spray it it's the masking really that was the main issue um so so you haven't missed anything there so here we are this is the the the, the main moment this is this is what it's all about that you can peel off the carrier film and i'm not very impressed uh, i've as i said i've pressed these decals down as much as i can i've used a setting solution from microset I've also used the guns one and you can see that it's peeling off now granted it is a silver surface and there are some holes there so that's where it's peeling off uh, the actual deco is what I'm saying that the the bit that you want on there the painted um, insignia uh, and unfortunately it does pull it off a bit on the roundel as well which is a, a major pain um, so all I can suggest is to make sure it's firmly placed. I'm not, I just can't see how a clear coat would help because the clear coat would be on the carrier film and you want the actual painted part of the decal to stay where it is. So I don't know, I'm not, I'm not too sure on what the best advice for these would be. And then you can see it peeled off and where I've had to cut it all into the panel lines. Um, and use a riveter, which I'll show you now, to pick out the rivets through the painted um, decal. 
whereas uh, a lot of people prefer decal, but uh, I'm from Somerset, I'm afraid, so it, so it is decal for me. Um, so running through the decal here with the Rosy River to tool, it just pushes through and it's a bit more of a help to get that process started of trying to get it bedded into the yeah. rivets. Um, after this, I do then apply copious amounts of setting solution again and press it in and it does work a little bit but you've got to be very careful now the carrier film's off um, I did eventually get it to an area I was happy with unfortunately on the tail one of the most iconic bits of this aircraft is the, the white 19 and one of them peeled off in um, uh, quite a bit and so did uh, like I said on, on some of the rounders as well so I've had to paint that back in using watered down acrylics and it works okay uh, you can't actually see it on the roundels, but unfortunately the white paint I've used here is a little bit thick and that's going a little bit out of focus, so I apologise. And uh, towards the end you can see it. It looked terrible there, but I did. I sorted it out. I just couldn't do it on camera. Um, and here we are with the blue. So I've mixed Tamiya Dark Blue and Navy Blue. So it's XF8 and XF17 and tried to colour match it. I'm just painting in the parts where you can see the silver. It stands out a bit at the minute. That's really just the fact that the paint is matte and the decal is shiny. It Once it's got the matte coat over, I was actually surprised how well it disappeared. So it's reasonably happy with it. But, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. This is, what, this is the point. A state-of-the-art kit. You know, this kit was over £50 in the UK. It's meant to be all the bells and whistles, and quite frankly, it's left me a bit, um... I don't know, a bit empty. <laughs> it's not sort of tainted my um, 19 Squadron Spitfire, which I've been waiting to do for years. So it's unfortunate. Um, the yellow's a bit off as well on, on some of that. Uh, so you've just seen me get the door on, and now we're pushing on the fixed canopy. Uh, then onto the wheels, uh, typical cool Edward stuff, leaving the separate hubcaps. So you can paint up the wheels with your tyre black and then paint the hubcap separately, stick it in, and it's uh, perfect. Just how you want it. I've got the silver on the uh, landing gear as well. And then fixing the front windscreen. Nice placement there. Does need a little bit of a push, but it's all right. Um, and then it's Tamiya Extra Fin. If you're in any way in doubt about using Tamiya Extra Fin for clear parts, use PVA glue. Um, they, it can go wrong. But if you know what you're doing, it's all right. But if you don't and you're worried, I just would avoid it like the plague and use PVA glue. Um, so we've got there the uh, aerial mast and then we've got the flat canopy. So that's gone on, just checking that. I still haven't glued that on to, the, to now. Um, and it sits there well. This is how I like to do the uh, propeller blade tips, but I'm sure a lot of you will be looking at this in horror. It's not very accurate, but can't be masking up propeller tips unfortunately this is good enough if i'm honest um i left the gun barrels out uh to put in now uh, a word of warning if you do this obviously you've got to clip off the peg at the back uh but i was hoping that they'd slip in and, and meet the bar that's in part of the wing um spar there inside uh they don't one of them fell straight in so do be careful. You only want to push them in as far as they can go and then dab a bit of Tammy Extra Fin around the hole there. Um, otherwise, uh, you'll, <laughs> you'll never see it again because there's no other place for it to come out, unfortunately. So one gun barrel's gone in there, but uh, uh, again, it's not a problem because you won't notice these things. If I hadn't have told you, you just wouldn't notice it. Now, for weathering, I wanted to keep things very light and very um, easy and clean because this isn't a well-used warbird, this is a pre-war um, aircraft. So I'm just using the enamel washers from Ammo, which sometimes is a nice, easy shortcut. I tend to use oils, um, but that's when I want a particular finish. When I'm um, when, when we're doing something like this, it's going to be a clean bird. These are perfectly fine, these panel liners. So I've got a whole mix of them there. And then you can see one side of the wing has had it on, and this side is not, the right side. So we're just going to apply it there. Um, got a little bit of sped up footage here so I'm not quite going this fast and I just really let capillary action wick it through the, the actual line that's all I'm doing and it's um, simple and easy enough I'm not putting a wash in the rivets I think they're defined enough as you can see that you know they show up 
and that's good enough. I don't, I don't want them really over the top in your face. I'm not personally a fan of massive recessed rivets all over an aircraft, so if they're there, I'd like to keep them a bit subtle. Um, then on the wing route, again, I'm thinking my, my approach to this is grass airfields, um, muddy boots, that sort of thing. A bit of dry mud or a, a bit of um, dust in and around the wheel wells and the wheels, that's all I'm really looking for. Um, they may not have been on grass airfields, but that was my uh, that was what I was going for. And you can see the capillary action there working through from the panel line, just dabbing it and running around. That's all you've got to do. Um, and it, it, as soon as you're ready to get rid of it, just with a damp cotton bud uh, with a bit of thinners on it, you just wipe it away. And it should then stay where it needs to be, which is in the recessed panel line. And um, I think it looks pretty good for it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm just putting an extra few um, different colours all on this wing route just to kind of give you the idea that there's a bit of um, uh, work, you know, grime and wear there at the wing route. Not going for anything particular. Um, and a very subtle oil um, fuel stain here on the, on the fuel tank. So just letting that run down like that. Um, sending it in the direction of the wind. And then with a wide brush wiping that down just to really get the effect taking the extra off there with a with a cotton bud and now with a flat brush with a very touch of thinners just a damp damp wide brush i just wipe that down and feather it in you see how effective the dark wash is on the underside it doesn't need anything more than this um, this isn't a black wash but it does look like it is it's a dark brown wash that's always very effective on a silver um, aircraft. A uh, little bit too dark, if I'm honest. Um, I'd usually use raw umber oil paint, and this is this is a, just a shade darker, um, and it's sort of coming off black uh, to the eye. But it's okay. It's 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 fine for this this process. But it might be better trying to use a slightly lighter brown on a silver um, so silver base, because it can be a bit strong. But you can see there that the roundel looks fine now. It's got its matte coat on. This is all over a matte coat, if I haven't said that. Um, all the weathering. Uh, it slows it down a bit. On a gloss coat, it tends to run a bit fast down the panel lines and it uh, can wipe off a bit easily. Just gives it a bit more bite on a matte coat. Um, and now pigments as well. So I've put them on the wheels and in the wheel wells and just given an idea of it kicking up a bit of dusty mud on the underside. And that's all I really wanted. Didn't want to do any more than that. Uh, so now we've got the pastels and these are used for the exhaust. So you can see the colors I'm using here. I just kind of cut a bit off. Uh, so that's yellow ochre as I'd call it, or you know, kind of desert yellow color, dark brown, a bit of black as well. You need these colors to give you the shades for what we're about to do on the exhaust. Um, there's a bit of white and it doesn't actually hurt to put a bit of that red in. I don't do that here, but you could. You want to really get a kind of browny, pinky tinge to it. And we'll just mix those up um, and blend it in. You can see they're quite large pigments. You, you want to get them blended and then just brush it on to the exhaust that have been painted matte paint with uh, rubber black. You could use just straight black, but rubber black just gives it, it gives it a bit more definition again. And I find this incredibly effective to give a burnt feel to the exhaust. Just changes it instantly and makes them look in my eyes to what I've seen when I look at these aircraft after the exhaust have been used and, and the heat has treated the metal a bit. You know, they're not just one colour, there, there are a number of shades all over. Um, and this is the most effective way I've, I've come across it. I'm very happy with it. I'll just show you again on this side. It goes a bit better this side. You can see how it transitions. So uh, that's how I do exhaust. Simple. And um, that's about it. So I noticed that my picture from Duxford on the wall happened to be this exact aircraft. So that was a nice change. Um, that uh, I actually got... A little bit of a connection to this one. And uh, that's brought this aircraft to an end. Just added on a few last details. The 
uh, etched metal parts there on the wing and a bit of Ushi fine rigging thread for the aero. Thanks for watching and um, stay in tuned. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Um, if you want to support the channel, we've got a Patreon campaign uh, down below where you got you can get early access to videos. There's also a link to PayPal. You can subscribe, you can send me an email, get in contact, whatever. Let me know comments below. If you have liked the video, please give it a like and stay tuned because there's much more coming. We're on to weekly videos now, so that's weekly build videos. And we've got a little series coming as well to mix it up on some armor. Uh, so there's a lot in the pipeline. So if if that all sounds like something you're interested in, uh, do please consider subscribing. And uh, as always, I'll see you in the next video.